Welcome to Pro Nation. This is Lambo. This is the recruiting trail, episode two of Duke Blue Devils basketball. All right, the, 20, the class of 2024. Uh, if you need your merch, you go to TotemPoNation.com. Like I said, we're eight days away from Christmas. The big sale going on. Get your shirt, get your hat, whatever is comfortable for you, obviously. Uh, thank you, Silas, for giving us the platform. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Blue Devils basketball, the class of 2024. 24. Let's get it. All right. Uh, Blue, Blue, Duke Blue Devils. All right. They're in a second year head coach and Josh Snyder, obviously. You know, the, the big difference in Coach K, they've always been good at recruiting. But if you are not a Duke fan, I know there's UNC fans out there, Virginia Tech fans out there, any type of fans. I think everybody hates Duke. I really hate Duke as well, but I have to give props where props is due. Um, Duke has a very, very good roster, by the way, obviously, when it comes to recruitment. They are ranked number one in recruiting right now when it comes to basketball. It's always between Duke and Kentucky. They're at number one right now. They have one four-star, and they got five four-stars, um, and they have zero three-stars. Obviously, they only have five total commits, but it's very, very early. All right, they're in the middle of basketball season. So I'm doing covering this very, very early. This is not, you know, what Matt's doing, obviously, with the Kosh Wolf recruiting where, you know, the season's already ending or we did it in the middle of the season, um, obviously. So this is very, very early. Um, so anything can happen very, very early in the signing process. Um, so at number one for recruiting that y'all know about as Duke fans, obviously, give it to my boy right here, all right? My boy right here in Cooper Flag. All right. I like what Cooper Flag brings uh to this table, obviously. Just look how tall and what size he has. He's Marcheval Academy in Florida, obviously. He is a 6'9, 195 pounds. He's his five out of five, 100 star. He is ranked number one nationally um in everything, like literally number one in recruiting, like nationally. Like this guy can do whatever you need him to do, basically. Um, he can dunk, he can move and transition. I've seen this guy at a lot of camps, obviously. Um, he did look at some other schools, obviously, uh, but they were like what Kansas State, Kansas, Iowa, and Connecticut. Obviously, Connecticut is a very, very good basketball school as well. Um, uh, but he's a definitely a player. Um, he can shoot, he competes. Um, he's a great on the ball defender. Um, his ability to uh play making skills is very, very great. Um, he got excellent footwork. Um, he doesn't need to be the vocal point of the offense is what Duke is. Uh, Duke has so many guys uh, that can score, obviously, um, but he's also strong. Uh, he needs to build more muscle, obviously, but when it comes to this guy, he can take contact, all right? When you're in a game of college basketball, you have to be able to take contact, and I like what this guy is doing. He is able to take some contact, so Cooper Flag uh, would definitely – you know, be the face of college basketball, um, especially going into Duke uh, next season. All right. So the second guy that I want to look into, obviously, um, is Patrick Ngambu. All right. Patrick Ngambu. All right. He is from Paul Catholic uh, School in Fairfax, Virginia, which is not far from where we live at, obviously. He's four out of five star, uh, 97 rating. He's nationally ranked 20 overall. Um, and everything, Patrick Magoball the second, all right, 6'11, 235 pounds. All right, this guy, um, has some visits at Michigan, Kentucky, Kansas, and Connecticut. Obviously, um, he chose Duke over basically Kentucky. Kentucky was in the running for him, uh, and Kansas State was in the running for him as well, obviously. But, uh, Kentucky are also battling for guys, but this guy has a lot of size, um. He could really move both ends of the floor. He could pass. Uh, he could do whatever. He's a great rim protector, obviously. Um, he has had some injuries in the past, um, obviously, which is something to really watch out for. But I think this guy uh, will somewhat, you know, be fine, um, obviously, when it comes to this guy. Patrick Nagambu, obviously, great size. Um, you know, he's efficient. 70% when he played in the EYBL uh, league. Um but he can do anything half court. His mobility is great. Uh, but like I said, um, he just has to, there's some stuff he has to work on, obviously. But he is a very true low post scorer. 
Um, and he has very good touch, obviously. So this guy will be something special. When it comes to Duke, I think this guy could be more like a Zion Williamson, but not but not like fat though. You know what I'm saying? Like not 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 a fat Zion Williamson where he was good and he was big. If he keeps that size without any body fat or whatever, I think this guy could potentially be better than Zion Williamson, depending on how long this guy uh stays in the University of Duke, obviously. Um, the third player you also want to watch out for um, when it comes to recruiting, obviously, is this guy right here. All right, this guy right here, um, Isaiah Evans. All right, he's from North Mecklenburg, um, North Carolina. All right, 6'6", 170. Um, like I say, he's rating 98. He's 5 out of 5. Nationally ranked uh, 11, obviously. But when it comes to Isaiah Evans, a small forward at 6'6". Now, he needs to build a little bit more muscle, 6'6", 170. Probably need to give about, you know, about 20, 30-something pounds, maybe muscle-wise. Um, he did visit um, Alabama. Alabama's a very, you know, good school, obviously. He also visited, uh, you know, our Appalachian State and Florida State. But obviously, he's going to choose Duke over those couple of things. Um, he did visit Florida uh, about two months ago. Um before, you know, signing with Duke, obviously. Um, so this guy, um, he's a great wing. Um, he's grown several inches. Obviously, he can shoot over contesting defenders. Um, he doesn't have the first step to blow past a defender. Um, the most underrated part about his game is he his passing ability. He uses his size to go on top of defenses. His defense is very, very great. His potential size, length, uh, should all translate, especially he's going to build up his body. But he also has a great two-way tools. They still could be in the very early stages of putting them all together. Um, he's got to be stronger, like I said. But he could end up a big wing who scores in multiple levels and a secondary playmaker, obviously. Um, so this guy is actually from Huntersville, North Carolina, 6'6", uh, 185, obviously. Um, I think he could be a very, very good contribution to this Duke team. Um, you know, I really like this guy. I like all three of these guys, um, obviously. But when it comes to Isaiah Evans, I think he'll bring a special impact in the wing, um, depending on what Duke really needs. Um, but Duke's going to get a lot of guys. The question is, um, is he going to play first? Uh, or, you know, he's going to sit the bench? Or is he going to make a big um, impact, obviously? So I got two more, two more recruits I got to also look at as well. Um, so you have one more. Uh, two more, obviously. So you got Darren uh, Harris from Paul Catholic, same school as Patrick Nagambu. Uh, he's a small forward. He is 6'6", 195, obviously. That's another small forward as well. Four out of five or 93, obviously. Um, and then also a guy to look out for from Wisconsin Leather and Con Compeple, um, a 6'5", 205 guy, obviously, from Wisconsin, obviously. You know Duke is always into size, obviously, when your recruits are – 6'9", 6'6", 6'5", and 6'11". So, so far when it comes to this Duke recruiting, um, they don't have anybody that, that's barely recruited. Maybe you got to be at least maybe 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, to play for the University of Duke, obviously, uh, when it comes to high expectation and when it comes to championships. Um, as far as in-state uh, recruiting, they only have one guy from in-state recruiting when it comes to Duke, which is Isaiah Evans. Um, they have two guys from Fairfax, Virginia, and then they have one guy from Florida, and they also have another guy from Wisconsin. So as far as in-state recruiting, and I understand it is very, very early in the season uh, as far as recruiting, very, very early signing. It's all letter of intent, obviously. Um, so they only have one guy from North Carolina so far out of five recruits, one guy. Um, I think Duke will dominate from anywhere. They should be able to dominate from their home state. They'll dominate in the West Coast. They'll dominate anywhere they can be. They've been no more recruiting for the past two to three seasons. Um, but with teams like Kentucky coming up there, obviously, they're, they're going to battle for some recruits as well. Duke and Kentucky have always battled for recruits in the past. Kentucky's my team, obviously. Um, but when it comes to this, um, your in-state recruits are very important, especially in football. But I think with basketball, I think they'll also be fine. But looking at this roster as well, um, they have a lot of guys. So they have Ryan Young, who was a transfer from Northwestern. I did watch him play um, last season. Uh, the six ten um, center, obviously, he was going to start the lineup. Then they got Neil Begovich, who was also a transfer from Stanford as well. Um, how many seniors does his team have? So they have Spencer Hubbard, uh, who's a senior as well. He's from Harvard Westlake. Uh, they also have Jeremy Roach, 
I was from St. Paul, and they also, that's it. So they only have two seniors on the roster as of right now. Um, yeah, they only have two seniors uh, for the roster. No, four, actually. Uh, so they have two graduates and one senior. So four seniors. They have two graduates from transfers. They also have another one, Spencer Hubbard, and then they also have another one, Jeremy Roach. And, of course, I mentioned Ryan Young and Neil Beveridge. So they basically got four players that would not literally be on the team next year. Uh, the rest of them, they have two freshmen, um, four freshmen. Um, they have about four sophomores on the roster, obviously, and they got about three juniors. So, obviously, playing for the University of Duke is very, very tough. It's not easy. Uh, you're not always going to get a lot of playing time. So, when it comes to this, I think my guys that will contribute to Patrick Nagobu, the second, and Cooper Flagg will probably get some very, very early playing time when it comes to Duke uh, Blue Devils basketball team. But like I said, you're playing for the University of Duke. Uh, you're playing to win uh, the Final Four. You're playing to win the national championship. The last team that won the national championship, obviously, was UConn. So um, Duke has had its early struggles this year, obviously. Um, they have a new coach, obviously. But we'll see how this goes. I don't think recruiting is going to be the issue. I think winning big games for Duke might be the issue going forward, uh, especially when they play against the, these tough teams under a coach. They don't have Coach K no more. So um, things are going to change just a little bit coaching-wise. Recruiting, I don't think it's going to change too much, but with the new coach, he's got to get adjusted, and it's going to be a lot of pressure on him. He can take the reins over for Coach K. Uh, this is it for the recruiting trail of Duke Blue Devils basketball. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If I miss anything and miss any, if I miss any additional information, go in the comment section. All right, thank you so much for for giving us the platform. Like, comment, subscribe to Total Pool Nation. This is it for the recruiting trail of the Duke Blue Devils basketball. We will catch you next week for more basketball recruiting. Peace out.